I, I said I was going to play for y'all the news conference, but Marilyn Mosby, she was hot today with uh, the governor of uh, Maryland. I was going to play some of that for y'all so you can so you can see the steam that was coming out of her ears. So Governor Larry Hogan, he has been attacking her for the last several years, saying that she wasn't doing enough to end violent crime in Baltimore, even telling the Democratic Attorney General to take over cases in her jurisdiction. Well, he did it again today, and she's like, you know what? I got some words for you, Governor. Check this out. Governor, for the past seven years, just like Donald Trump, Larry Hogan has used Baltimore City as a punching bag. He's attacked me. He's attacked all four mayors. He's attacked all five commissioners, police commissioners. And quite candidly, he's been more concerned with pointing the finger at everyone else as opposed to actually leading and delivering for a city that is the heartbeat of this state. Just as he's done in the past, today's press conference was a political stunt with no basis whatsoever to call me or my office out. I want to be clear that as state's attorney for Baltimore City, I've never said that I would not prosecute violent offenders or violent crime in the city of Baltimore. Every day, my talented prosecutors, which are being recruited by others including the Attorney General and other counties all across the state, are committed to working with the Baltimore Police Department to ensure accountability against individuals that wreak havoc in our communities. Had the governor set aside his philosophical differences and chosen to meet or even to talk to me, I would have been happy to show him the data that he's now making contingent on my office's funding. In fact, a great deal of the information that the governor is seeking is already published on my website. We went through this same unproductive exchange and exercise two years ago when my office debunked the misinformation that the governor was perpetuating in our letter to the Senate President, Senate President Ferguson. And now coming out of a global pandemic where the courts have literally been non-operational for a year and a half, in the past six months, my prosecutors are diligently working through the massive case backlogs, and yet they are still producing. To date, our data, which we publish every month on our website, since the reopening of the courts just this year, my office has had an overall 97% conviction rate. Our homicide unit, we have had 18 guilties, only three not guilties. That's an 86% conviction rate. Our felony division, 187 guilties, eight not guilties. That's a 96% felony conviction rate. Our gun violence enforcement division, 136 guilties, seven not guilties, 95% conviction rate. Our narcotics unit, 375 guilties, three not guilties, 99% conviction rate. My attorneys, since the beginning of this year, have indicted over 123 homicides, 591 felonies. Our Gun Violence Enforcement Division, when we talk about getting guns off the streets of Baltimore, they have had 335 indictments. Our narcotics unit has had 866 indictments. I tell you this today because I stand by the work of my office. I'll provide the governor anything he desires because I know how much my prosecutors do for this city. Just this week, James Phillips was found guilty of two counts of assault in the first degree, two counts of use of a firearm in the commission of a crime of violence and associated charges. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison following his August 19th conviction. Phillips shot and struck two brothers on Bel Air Road outside of the deli after an altercation occurred inside the store. Just yesterday, Ward Austin, 46 years old, pled guilty to second-degree rape of a 14-year-old girl and was sentenced to 20 years to spend over 12 years and five years probation. Austin followed the teen from a train station near Mondawmin to her bus, got off at her bus stop to pull her into an alley and to rape her. My prosecutors work every single day. And for the governor to come out today and say that my prosecutors, they don't do their jobs, that they don't prosecute violent criminals, 
that they don't sweat blood and tears for the safety of everyone in this city is a disgraceful lie. My prosecutors take violent crime seriously, and so do I. You got the sense that uh, she's a little pissed with the governor? Understatement. She is razor sharp, and what we see is we see Hogan playing politics. There was actually a commission called the Criminal Justice uh, Coordinating Council that was in place until 2017 when Hogan defunded it that was intended to, uh, you know, serve this exact purpose, to curb uh, crime in the city of Baltimore. So it's about performative politics. It's not about anything else but trying to knock Marilyn Mosby down. And we know that he ain't going to do that because she's strong as they come. Uh, I heard a lot of receipts there, Lee. Oh, boy, was she... Ooh, and that was... Look, that was boiling. That, that, that had been simmering for a while, and then that thing boiled over. I know Marilyn, and you don't, don't play with her. Don't don't play with her. And what I loved about it is she she came back. She was intent. She was passionate. But she came back with facts. She's talking about her close rates and 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 the number of cases and and all of that. I, I love it. You know. And and you know when we when you're dealing with the law, I'm telling you, man, get let the politics go, man. Let's just deal with justice. And we know, unfortunately, too often times justice is not the leading factor. And so much of this is, is racially motivated, it's politically motivated, and things like that. But go on, Sister Mosby. I, I appreciate your passion. Uh, indeed. All right. All right, folks. So we are out of time, but here's the deal. We're going to restream her whole news conference. And so for y'all, if y'all want to see the whole deal, I mean, she was on fire. All right, folks. Back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Once upon a time, there lived a princess with really long hair who was waiting for a prince to come save her. But really... Who has time for that? Let's go. Fill myself. I'm feeling She ordered herself a ladder with Prime one day delivery. And she was out of there. I want some hood girls looking back at it and a good girl in my tax bracket. Now, her hairdressing empire is killing it. And the prince, well, who cares? Prime changes everything. But I'm back at it and I'm feeling This weekend for the Bayou Classic, broadcasting live in partnership with Coca-Cola, Friday and Saturday. You do not want to miss it. Uh, so Black Star Network will be on the scene. That's right, covering the coaches' luncheon on Friday. We'll be broadcasting Friday night. Then, of course, uh, we'll be broadcasting from the Fan Zone. Uh, there's a parade Saturday morning, broadcasting that. Plus, from the Fan Zone, in addition... We'll be broadcasting the halftime. That's right, y'all. Don't worry about the rest of these folk. Don't worry about it. NBC doesn't show it. We'll be showing you the halftime show right here on the Black Star Network.